My brethren, if you don't mind, let's just clap for the Lord as we welcome everyone that have joined us across the world. Glory be to God. Well, you know, every year we have, you know, annual family retreat where we just, you know, speak to ourselves on and, and how to make the families better. Because we believe that if it's well with the families, it will be well with the nation. So we started, you know, all through the month of October, speaking, you know, about um, marriage and families. And then it spilled into the month of November, and today is the grand finale. I want us to give the Lord a big hand for Friday because it was very good. <clears throat> Let's thank God for yesterday also. And I'm believing God that our homes will get better and better in Jesus' name. Our theme for November is the fear of the Lord, but we'll be setting aside that theme. We'll continue on that theme next Sunday, just so that we can round up the family life retreat with the theme, Refuge. Refuge. Um, within that theme, the Lord is giving us a message titled, Cracks in the Refuge. Cracks in the Refuge. We we'll read Genesis 3, 1 to 10. Genesis 3, 1 to 10. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he had said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the food thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sowed victories, leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Let's stop there, you know, for sake of time. You know the story too well. A place of refuge describes a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. If you read Numbers 35, 9 to 11, you will clearly understand the meaning of refuge. Numbers 35, 9 to 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye become over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. The home where the husband, the wife, and the children dwell is designed as a refuge where there is love, safety, peace, provision, and security. Unfortunately, people today prefer to run out of the home, the place of refuge, to go and take refuge somewhere else. What a distortion of God's plan. Now it doesn't matter how solid a place of refuge is, once there are cracks, the cracks in the walls of the building open everyone inside to dangers. That's why this morning we are looking at the cracks in the refuge. If we can spot the cracks and fix the, track, the, 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 the cracks, then our homes again will become heaven here on earth. According to Main Mark, leaders in advanced ground engineering, it said, turning a blind eye to cracks in walls 
may mean you are missing the warning signs for serious and ongoing structural damage caused by subsistence. In other words, when you begin to observe cracks in the walls and you ignore it, you might as well be playing with some you know, reels in the foundation of the ground because it might be a sign that something is wrong with the foundation. Some cracks may not be as serious, but others can indicate a sinking or damaged foundation. If you don't address problematic cracks in walls, the damage to the foundations can quickly ruin the property. So, this morning we want to attempt to put a kind of close look at marriages, particularly our own individual marriage, to see if there be cracks. Because if you have cracks in it, and we are able to fix it this morning, then the home will yet again become a place of refuge. And may it be so in the name of Jesus. So what are the sources of cracks in the walls of marriage? I have five of them quickly, and there will be time to pray. Number one, the absence of the man and the independence of the woman create a crack in the wall of any marriage. In the first marriage between Adam and Eve, the devil waited for the absence of Adam to engage Eve. Whenever the man is not present in any marriage, and I don't mean physical presence because there are some men who are present in the house and yet absent. Whenever the man is not present as the priest of the house, as the man of the house, without any doubt, without any question, the devil will engage not only the wife, but the children. That was what happened. I have no idea where Adam was when Satan was engaging with Eve. But if he was present, I can assure you that together they will have defeated Satan. So the absence of man can create cracks in the wall. And so the moment the crack came up in the first marriage, Eve, the wife, inherited the cause of pains. In Genesis 3.16, Genesis 3.16, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. When I look at women raising children all by themselves, I mean, you could see the pain, you could see the agony. That's why I laugh when some women say, Pastor, leave me alone. I'm going to divorce. I've made up my mind. It's divorce. Okay. I mean, you may have all the reasons to be angry. You may have all the reasons to want to go into divorce. But remember, <laughs> you are not wired to raise your child by yourself. That's not the design of God. Even to the man, he says it's not good for the man to be alone. Now, if it's not good for the man to be alone, I can, be, I can assure you it is worse for the woman to be alone. The cost of reconciliation is worth paying for the benefit. Don't quickly say the answer to the problem of your marriage is divorce. Count the cost before <laughs> you conclude. Anyway, whenever man, a man is absent in the family, either physically emotionally, or in several ways. I mean, I, I told them in the first service, it's increasing now that husband and wife in the same house are in different rooms. Not for one day, not for one week, not for one month. I know one that has gone for about two years now. Why don't you leave if you don't want to? What, what, what exactly are you doing? You're in the same house raising children. And they are observing you, you are not talking to one another. During the retreat yesterday, I was, or was it Friday? I, I don't know which of the days I was mentioning that, uh, or in the course of the month, I was mentioning that a boy, a little boy in the house, at that time the boy was probably five, six years old, 
was telling the mom that I'm going to sleep in the boy's room tonight. Because the little boy had now discovered that daddy sleeps in one room, the boy's room, and mommy sleeps in another room, the girl's room. The moment you allow the absence of the man in a house, not because he's not physically in the house, because there are people, like I said, they are in the house, but they are not there. Or you are, there is no emotional connection. You are physically present, but emotionally absent. There is already crack in the wall. The man and his family were driven out of delight, joy, and luxury in the Garden of Eden. What a pity. The devil has no new tricks. He has only developed more aggression in creating cracks in every place of refuge. Keep the godly man away from his wife. There will soon be cracks in the wall of the marriage. And Satan shall come in to steal their blessings, replacing with curses. Genesis 3 verse 9. Genesis 3 verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are thou? Where are the men? In the lives of their children. Where are the men? In the lives of their wives. You are raised. You are anointed and ordained to be the priest in your home. Where are you? If you are absent in your marriage as a man, there's a crack already. When the man is absent from the wife, the wife will soon be engaged by the enemy. And very soon, the two will be out of fellowship with God. A woman that is left alone, women by nature like to talk. Men talk too. But for a woman, you want to kill her if you're in the same house and you're not talking to her. It's very difficult for a woman. They are not wired like that. The easiest way, I mean, some women don't even mind. You do something else. But to just ignore her, not talk to her, it's, it's hard. So in your absence, she will then begin to engage because then the devil is always available. So if he doesn't want to talk to you, I have some, I have some counsel for you. And then the devil begins to counsel your wife. So when she now misbehaves, you are wondering where it has come from. The independent woman will soon drive the man away. Remember the first crack I said is the absence of the man and the independence of the woman creates a crack in the wall. So the independent woman will soon drive the man away. You know, since the Beijing conference, there have been trouble about independence, you know, amongst women. That's when you hear woman emancipation. Has women been in bondage before? equal rights for women, movement for the freedom of women. Are they tied down or something? All of this has driven some men away from homes. Have you wondered, why will Eve not tell the devil, let me check with my husband before my decision to eat the fruit? I mean, you have a husband, your head, and a stranger was giving you a counsel and advice, contrary to what your husband had said, because it was God. It was Adam that God spoke to. And your husband has spoken to you. Now a stranger now came and said, don't worry about it. I said, okay, maybe what you are saying kind of makes sense. But look, I have a man above me. Let me check with my husband. If she had done so, there wouldn't have been trouble. The pressure from a contentious woman can freeze the brain of a superman. Oh, you can ask something if you, if you see him one of these days. Oh, it was <laughs> very superman. But Delilah said, I said, show me. The first time he went this way, went that way, the woman came out. The Bible said he, 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 she vexed him so. He got to a time, he lost his brain. And the Bible said in Proverbs 25, verse 24, Proverbs 25, verse 24, it is better to live in a corner of the roof than in a house shared with a contentious woman. A woman that is contentious, it will drive the man crazy. Proverbs 27, verse 15, a constant dripping on a day of steady rain and a contentious woman, they are alike. So some people prefer to be beaten by the rain outside. 
than by, by, than by the words of their wives at home. So men has been living on the top of the roof for a while because the woman is contentious. Your response to everything is, no, I don't agree. The man has not finished analyzing the thing. Say, no, 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 I don't agree. Ah. The independent woman will soon drive the man away. So, the number one crack, the absence of man and the independence of the woman create the crack in the wall of any marriage. Number two, when the heart of any of the spouses is stolen, there comes the cracks in the wall of the marriage. Listen to me. There are strange men and women looking for hearts to steal. The devil stole the heart of Eve. <laughs> Don't tell me that my wife is a godly wife and I trust her. Her heart cannot be stolen. I thank God for your wife. But any woman that is not properly taken care of, any woman that is neglected and ignored can be stolen away. I've seen ladies that got married as virgins. I know one that got married at 29 as a, 27 as a virgin. Now, if you got married at 27 as a virgin, you must be a very decent girl. But when there was trouble in the marriage, she got entangled with a colleague and went to adultery. Of course, she cried, she regretted that me, how did this even happen? Even herself couldn't believe it. That's how easy it is. When your emotion is crushed and crushed and is down. When you are vulnerable. There are wolves around. They will start by trying to help you. They will try by giving you support. They might even be folks in the church. I was talking to a, to a lady who was very hungry with her colleagues at work. The managers love her because she's very good at her job. But about five employees had left the company because of her. So they, they wanted, you know, to someone who can, you know, be like a, a, a counselor and find out. So they, so they called me. <laughs> and then I discovered that this lady got into a very terrible divorce and now a single mom. So according to her, the brothers in the church will always come home to help her to do something, pick her, her, her children from school for her and all of that. And according to her, about three or four of church people had slept with her. So one day she felt like it's like I'm just being used by everybody and dumped. She made up her mind that anyone under my own influence will suffer pain. I don't know if there's any medical language for that. So she said the only time she gets a bit okay is when she makes life difficult for another person. I was hearing that for the first time. I, I could, I didn't, I mean, he said yes. Because it feels like somebody else will also feel the pain. Why is it that I'm the only one in pain? So when, when a subordinate will come with a, an assignment that they've done very well, say, no, it's bad. Go and do it again. And she feels happy. How can somebody be, move from that point? I'm not talking about a non-believer. These are church people. So make no mistakes about it. That your husband. Oh, my husband is a dickhead. No woman can touch him. I pity you. It is when we are emotionally connected and there is no crack, there is no gap. That's when all can be well. Many hearts are stolen. Maybe they've not fallen into full-blown adultery, but they're already enjoying talking to someone who talks nicely to them. Do you know everybody likes to be talked nicely to? The devil stole the heart of Eve. I don't know the reason why. Why she just easily? But I can, I, can, I can see from scripture that Eve had lost of the eyes because she could see. She said, look, there is, this, this fruit looks nice. Lost of the flesh. Pride of life. I've told you the story before of a guy who gave his life to Christ. I was, I was surprised. He wasn't happy. He wasn't rejoicing. He said, look, I'm sad. Pastor, I said, no, you should be joyful. He said, no, I know that now I can go to heaven, but I'm sad when I see the lives of men, people that I've ruined. I said, what did you do? 
He said, when I wasn't saved, I belonged to a cult in Houston, not in Nigeria. In that cult, they look for vulnerable women, women who are not happy in their marriage, women whose husbands are never around, women who like money. And they give them money. They sponsor them on trips. But on those trips, they've planted people that will sleep with them. But for every sex they have with anyone in the call, they suck their glory. And they become empty shell. And each time I, I, I think about many women that we have destroyed their lives, I feel bad that now I am saved. But I've destroyed some people's lives. I said, be praying for them. You, you enjoy your salvation because now you're a new person. But the key word is vulnerable women. Women not happy. Keep your spouse in your heart. So when you are away, she's present still. Number three, divorce is a serious crack in the wall of any marriage that turns the refuge to a refuse. You know, I, I talk about Adam's technical divorce. If you listen to Adam in Genesis 3 verse 12, Genesis 3 verse 12, and the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to me, to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. The woman, the woman whom thou gavest to me. Adam had reduced Eve from a wife to a housemaid. He said, the woman you gave to me. I, I thought the, the, the way to say is my wife. <laughs> Say no, the woman you gave to me. 2.5 million divorces in the U.S. every year. It's a terrible statistics. I mean, I, I finished, I finished service on Sunday. Last Sunday was a good service. It was, it was Isaac first year, you know, birthday, and it was glorious. Then I got to the office. <laughs> got to the office. Waiting for me was a man. And said, look. My wife had filed divorce. And I have said in my secret prayers, and I want to make it open now, that Lord in this church, anyone who's a member of this church, don't make it possible for them to ever go through divorce. Amen. I had only two, amen. amen. Even if it's one day before, turn things around. Amen. And I'm believing God for that family. That divorce will be turned around in the name of Jesus. Many years ago, many, many years now, one of our brothers sent for me that a member of the church, the husband was in our church, but the sister was coming, that the husband had just served her with divorce, 21 days notice. That pastor, please get involved. I said, but the sister has not called me. He said, yeah, but just call her. Say, no, you tell her to call, because maybe she doesn't want a matter to get to pastor. So the sister called me. I said, do you really want me to be your pastor? He said, you're already my pastor. I said, no. I pastor those who I talk to, and they do what I say. Those are the people I pastor. I said, okay, yes, I want to be my pastor. So I took off, went to the house of the member, because now the lady had moved to the house of this member who was telling me. I said, okay, do you really want me to get involved? He said, yes. You will do everything, he said. said okay. So the house, the, the house not, wasn't far away, so I went to... I walked to the house, parked my car in this other house. I, I called the husband at the door. He, he was coming here once a while, but not a member. So I called him. I said, this is, you know, to the bad of the king's place. He said, oh, pastor, how are you doing? I said, oh, we give God glory. I said, please, I fire on my roof. And you are the one that can help me. He said, how do you mean, pastor? I said, well, you know, I have a secret prayer that I pray for members of the church that none of my the church members will go through divorce and one is about to go through divorce now and you are the only one that can put the fire off ah i said pastor is it that one? Oh, don't worry it's too late i said no we can still put off this fire I say pastor where are you i said i'm at your door I say for real i said yes if you let me in we can talk so he came open the door i got inside the man said pastor there's nothing i'm not going to change my mind i said okay can you tell me three things? Maybe I said five. Five things that must change for you to change your mind. He said, I don't need more than three things. He said, but I have five on my list. He said, number one, 
Whenever we had a quarrel, my wife would bring her three-year-old between us in bed. And you know what that means. I say, yes, I know. That's not good. All right. Number two, she earns as much money as I earn, but I'm the only one taking care of anything. She's supposed to be my helpmate. She's not doing anything. I say, that's bad enough. Number three, even though I'm from, you know, east, eastern part of Nigeria, I lived in the west, and I like to eat those kind of food. I've told my wife to learn how to cook it. I say, don't worry, my wife will teach her. <laughs> Um, I, I, oh, this guy is very neat. When well, you see her in white, you know, very neat guy. Say, but my wife, see, shoe will be there, uh, bag will be there, uh, this will be there everywhere, you know, upside down. He mentioned the five things. I said, okay, I can't promise you that the five will go. But what about three? He said, no, if two can change, that woman cannot change. Okay, let's, let's strike a deal. Give me three months. If we can't change three things, then I will be on your side. Say, are you sure, Pastor? I say yes. I say, okay. Your wife is not far away. Can I call her to come? And say yes. Come. So, sat them down, sister. Which of these five <laughs> are you going to pick? By the way, the woman is the one that is Christian. And what the Bible says is that your righteousness can influence positively your spouse. Anyway, one month after. This man came back with the wife to my office. The man was crying that I would have thrown away a good woman. That she, not only has she changed the three things, she has changed the five things. And if I clap for the Lord, go ahead and clap for the Lord. But this whole thing began with a man who was willing to listen to a man of God. She could have told me, go. I've, I've received more respect in certain situations from those who are not as spiritual than those who carry titles. So I'm believing God with you. Oh, you may be having a troubled marriage at this time. Do everything. Don't say I've done everything. Have you fasted seven days? Have you fasted 21 days? Have you done your own beat? Have you fixed the, the, the cracks in the wall? Before arriving at that conclusion, because the cost of divorce is expensive. Even if you say, I will keep myself, I'm not going to marry again. Are you sure you will not emotionally stray away and compromise your salvation? If you can handle it, are you confident that your child or children will survive it? Or if you say, well, I will remarry again, are you sure that other woman, that other man is going to be better? Statistics shows that they are worse. There are some that are <laughs> blessed and things could be better. There are some percentages like that, but there are few. Second, third, fourth marriages get worse than the first one. Divorce is a serious crack in the wall. Number four, demonic attack forces a crack into the walls of a marriage. For Adam and Eve, it was a terrible demonic attack. Of course, they supported it by not being together. The attack is always on demand. Men, just get this straight. Do you know the attack on Eve was on Adam? The devil understands that if the head can be cut off, then the game is over. The woman as the gatekeeper, because the devil met Eve at the gate, can be the opening into her home. The woman as the helpmeet, because the man needs help, may be the source of attack on her husband. The man as the prophet, the seer, the priest, is the covering of refuge over the family. Do you know that until Adam ate the fruit, there was no problem? Because when Eve ate the fruit, if Adam remained the priest of the house, and when the wife came, said, you did what? And Adam will stand up and call on God and say, Lord, it is me. Take it on me. My wife had the fruit. Please, Lord, have mercy. Do you know there will have been no problem? But because your wife is misbehaving, she had insulted you, which is bad. Uh, she probably called police on you, which is bad. And then you do the same thing on the other side. You are like Adam. When the two of you are now guilty, then there's trouble. Why wouldn't you 
as the priest of the house. Trust God to help you. This woman has not done right, but I'm the one responsible. Do you know when any plane crashes, who do you think they are asking for? The pilot. Do you know you are the pilot in that home? Sometimes we don't even know the name of the co-pilot. But we know the captain whenever there is a crash. People of God, the devil is still on rampage. It's not every misbehavior of your, of your spouse that has come directly from her. Some of them are induced by the enemy. And it's important that you take the fight to the enemy and not to your spouse. As I close, poor foundation will crack the wall of any marriage. When the foundation is faulty and you build on it, very soon you see cracks. Getting married for the wrong reason is a faulty foundation and we crack the walls of the marriage. And I'm speaking to the singles one more time as we round up this family library retreat. Don't be under so much pressure that you go get married for the wrong reason. Get married for immigration. Get married because of your age. Get married because the fellow is from your, 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 your village. Get married because the fellow is... If you get married for the wrong reason, you have set up a faulty foundation for your home. And you must expect cracks. Spending more time with strangers, confiding in strangers, and taking the advice of strangers behind your spouse is a faulty foundation that will crack the wall of any marriage. A pastor's wife was, you know, brought to me some years ago, many years now. She stumbled on the ex on Facebook. So they began to talk. And the whole flames got rekindled. So when the man noticed that, because he's a very good Christian, that look, I'm married, she's married, the, the way we are going, we talk to the night, now I'm going to, to, to Houston, we are, they have planned where we are going to meet. He said, look, I don't think this feeling is right. He told her, but he said, no, we are not doing anything. We are just friends. The guy blocked, blocked her, cut off the relationship. Again, I don't know if there's medical name for this one. She ran depressed that she could no longer talk to this fellow. So by the time they brought her to me, the friend, it was so that I could help her stop thinking about this whole boyfriend, a pastor's wife. That's why when you spend more time with strangers, you will stray. Somebody shared a personal experience with us during the family life meeting. And I shared it in the first service. When you find yourself like that, don't ever think you can handle relationship with your, stray, with, 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 with your ex. You can't handle it, I promise you. You cannot. Once it happens and you find that you are connecting on social media, run away, block the first fellow. But if you have not blocked the fellow and you are swaying little, thank God the fellow is far away, but one day the enemy will arrange, you will meet, and that will be the day. What did this fellow, what did she do? Once she noticed that, well, this fellow that I should have married before, now he's calling me, it looks like I'm strange. I know what I will do. The next time the fellow called, told the husband, take the phone. What a wise woman. And once the husband picked up the phone and said, it's me, the husband and so and so, that's the end of the matter. That was the last, that fellow will never call again. But I thank God for the husband. Because some men, when <laughs> you say, your boyfriend, well, how did you even meet? You are talking to her, you. Very soon you say you are usher in church. And while the conversation is going on, slap the woman. Get what's going to happen. After that event, going to call, she's going to call, <laughs> call the guy. Maybe I made a mistake, really. Listen to me. Spending time with strangers will make you stray. Spending or finger pointing and blame games will crack the walls of any marriage. Oh, Adam said it's the wife. The wife said no, it's a serpent. Hiding from God will ruin the foundation of any marriage because the, the true foundation of any marriage is the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ himself. They were hiding. The gap that is big enough to accommodate the devil in your marriage is a dangerous gap. 
If you need independence, emancipation, and freedom from the leadership of your husband, you are already bound by the devil and need immediate deliverance. The decision you are taking alone without checking with your spouse will soon backfire. The man who is not a priest in his home will fall into the same ditch the wife has fallen. The man is to cover the nakedness of the wife. I wish Adam did that. But he failed. I'm out of time. But the way out is to rebuild the cracks in the walls of your marriage by taking responsibility for your actions and stop the blame game. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the devil. But you know, the devil is better than the two of them. The devil did not blame anybody. The devil took responsibility for his actions. So the devil is better than some of us. Number two, allow God to cover your nakedness. Genesis 3.21. Genesis 3.21. Unto Adam also, to his wife, did the Lord God, and, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Christ is the ultimate cover. Wage a warfare together, number three, against the devil, the enemy of the marriage institution. Number four, let the...